Mr. PF, I'm going to show you a quick, cheap way to make a mobile auto clicker. So I just showed you guys a little list of the things you're going to need. Here I'm showing you on the picture. There's the two-speed one I've been working on that you can also do things like alking. You could make your own if you think about it hard enough and you make two of these ones I'm going to show you how to make today. So this one utilizes a soda can for the weight and also just a base to use it. What you're going to do is you're going to take a couple pieces of duct tape and wrap it around the soda can. This aids with the hot glue being able to stick to it and it also prevents the metal from being able to short out on anything. So once you get your can wrapped up with some tape, go ahead and grab your servo. I use these ones, you can usually pick them up on Amazon or eBay for about 5 bucks a piece and they seem to work pretty good for this purpose. So now you're going to want to repin the connector. What I do is I take the middle one out, which is the positive connection, and I repin it with the orange one, which is the signal wire. So I'm going to show you a little process to how to do that here. What I'm doing here is I'm slipping the tip of the razor blade underneath the flap of the plastic there to be able to pull out the wire. And then I'm just going to take the other wire and I'm going to put it right back in and let the flap down and it will hold the wire in there. So now that you have that done, go ahead and separate the wires. Keep the red and the brown one together and just separate the signal wire. So now go ahead and grab your gift card, your credit card, or old debit card, or whatever you're going to use. I use these because they send them to me in the mail all the time, so I use them for all kinds of different building purposes, and they're kind of strong and work good. So go ahead and grab your servo and line it up sideways. You're going to want to bend the card, but you want to line it up with the servo so it sits flush with one side. You don't want it hanging off too much. Otherwise, it's going to hit the can, and it's just not going to line up evenly. I'm going to kind of show you what I'm talking about here. Now once you have your card bent, go ahead and put some hot glue on it and apply your servo. It will give you a little bit of time to be able to work your servo around and get it in the right spot. You'll be able to see what I'm talking about in the last clip here. Now grab your hot glue gun and go ahead and put some hot glue on the back of the card and apply it to the can. Now I'm going to take some of these toothpicks and put some hot glue on them and use them as supports. You could use uh, popsicle sticks or whatever else you had laying around for some support just so the card doesn't bend and gives the servo a little bit of more stability.
I'm just going to add a little bit of more hot glue so that way I can reinforce it. I'm going to add some more toothpicks on the top and also on the other side for some support but I'm going to go ahead and skip forward so that way you don't have to watch me glue all these toothpicks onto the servo. So now you can see I have a few more toothpicks glued on there and it's a lot more stable. So we're going to put the can to the side for a second and we're going to work on the mount for the stylus. I use these generic ones here, they work just fine for the purpose that we're doing here. So for the stylus, you're going to want to go ahead and take the top off. I use these generic ones here. We're going to work on the mount here real quick. I 3D print my mounts because I couldn't think of anything else to mount the stylus with. If you guys end up needing one of the ones that I use, go ahead and message me. I could probably sell them for 10 bucks a pop or something like that. It's a pretty simple mount. It just uses two screws for the piece that comes with the servo and then it slides over the stylus and uses a three millimeter bolt to clamp it in place. I'll show you how to use it here in just a second. So here I'm showing you the arm that comes with the servo. What I like to do is I usually like to take a small flathead or a Torx bit and just bore out the hole a little bit so it accepts the screw a little easier and doesn't try to crack the plastic. And that's what I'm showing you here. Now I'm putting my Phillips bit in and I'm getting ready to put the screws that come with the servo into the stylus mount and run it into the arm. Like I mentioned before, I 3D print my stylus mounts. You might be able to come up with a better idea than the one I use, maybe utilizing some kind of tape or some glue or something like that. I like mine because it doesn't have no leeway, it doesn't wiggle or it doesn't wobble when you're trying to use it or bend or anything like that. It's a completely solid mount once you put the screws in. And like I was mentioning earlier, if you end up needing one, I can probably sell these on Etsy to you guys for 10 bucks a pop or something. It has three different holes in it so you can put your mounting screws in three different locations.
So here I'm showing you that I'm just putting the arm of the servo on there. And I'm going to rotate it around a little bit just to give you guys the idea of the motion it's going to make. Now once you get the arm on there, you might have to take it off and put it on a couple times just to get the location of the arm in the right spot. So now I have the stylus mounted to the servo arm and I have it functioning like it would. As you can see, the stylus can slide up and down inside the mount until you put the set screw in. So depending on how thick your device is or what kind of table you're using or whatnot, you're going to have to slide the stylus up and down inside of the mount, or depending on if you use my mount or use your own mount. So I'm going to put my phone underneath of it, and I'm going to try to position it into a spot where I think it's going to press when it actually actuates. So I'm just kind of playing with it right here to see if I can get it in the right spot. So once you have the stylus in a spot you think it's going to work, go ahead and take your M3 set screw and drive it into the stylus mount. That's going to prevent it from slipping or moving, and it's going to hold it nice and tight in spot. Now it's locked in place and it won't move. Now go ahead and grab your USB cable. You're going to want one of the ends cut off and you're going to want to strip the wires just so you have the positive and negative wire. The rest of them don't matter. Now once your USB cable is ready, go ahead and take the cable that we prepared earlier that's on the servo and snip it halfway through. Once you snip it, you're going to want to strip each end of those cables and rejoin them back together. So you want to go red to red and brown to brown. So now that you have those rejoined, go ahead and grab the USB cable and go ahead and join the red to red and the black to black. Some USB cables will be different so you might have to look up a pinout for your specific USB cable. Ideally, you'd want to solder these but for the purpose of, purpose of this video, I'm just going to throw some heat shrink over the top. You can also use electrical tape but heat shrink's more ideal. So there we go, our power cable is done. You can also throw a capacitor over the positive and negative lines. 
which some USB ports will need because they don't put out enough milliamps. I also added a little bit more hot glue on the side of the servo and also on the card for some better bonding. So now once I have both of these heat shrinked up, I'm going to go ahead and just throw some glue on the lid of the can and stick these wires in there. Make sure your wires aren't exposed because they will short out on the can. So I'm just doing this to keep the cable out of the way and add a little bit of cable relief. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here so you guys don't have to watch glue dry. Okay, now to the fun stuff. We're going to move on to the chip. I already have my mine pre-programmed. If you guys want me to do a video on how to program these, I can do that also. It's going to vary depending on your Arduino chip. I just have this cheap clone laying around, so I'm going to use this for the purpose of this exercise. I'm also going to be including the links for the code that you're going to need to upload to the Arduino and also some links for the, all the different things that you're going to need to buy if you're going to buy this stuff. If you don't want to deal with all the coding hassle, I suppose I could probably code a few of these and maybe sell them to you guys already pre-coded if that's something maybe somebody will be interested in. So I just went ahead and put a little bit of hot glue on the chip and I'm also going to add a little bit of more hot glue and I'm going to jump ahead a little bit so you guys don't have to watch glue dry. Also make sure when you're gluing the chip on that none of the metal points of the chip are making contact with the bare exposed part of the can. At least cover the can up with enough duct tape or keep the chip away from it because the chip will short out on the can also. So if you don't already know your chip like I know mine, then you're going to want to note your positive and negative connection and where it's going to need to be plugged in before you glue your chip down. I already know where I need to plug mine in so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. You're also going to know need to know where you need to plug your signal wire in. The code that I'm going to supply is going to be pin 13, but it, it might vary depending on your device or if you have to change that code yourself. But the supply code that I'm going to give you guys, it will be on pin 13, and I'm going to show you guys that plugged in now. So as you've seen, I even had to flip the can up and check to make sure which pin was 13 because I guess I don't know the chip as good as I thought I knew it. So I just put a little heat shrink over the connection of the signal wire pin so it's not exposed and it can't short over any of the other pins if it gets bent or knocked off or something else like that. So now it's ready. As you can see, I'm ready here to teleport. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and get it to teleporting. And there you go. You built your own mobile auto clicker. Please like, comment, and sub subscribe. If you guys end up making one of these, send me some pictures. I'd love to see some of the things you guys create. You could put two or three or four of these together, and you could come up with some pretty complex uh, ideas here. You could use this for any other game you could think of. Like I said, like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to leave all the links down in this description so you guys will be able to find the stuff that you need. If you guys are going to be interested in one of the mounts for the stylus, let me know. I can print some of those out for you guys. It ain't quite the 3D printed one like I designed, but a lot of people want a one they could make at home, and here you go. Hopefully you guys can get some teleporting in before Christmas. Enjoy.